right? You're live. Good evening, everyone. We'll give a few minutes here yet for people to get on. Thanks for joining us tonight. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday. Happy spring. We got some great stuff to talk about tonight. Really excited, really timely information. Uh, hi, Gail. Uh, shout out to my bestie out there, Ann, Ann Johnson. Hope you're with us tonight, Ann. Thanks for everything you've done here. Set me up with some great background and, and lots of good material. Um, thanks to all you fine folks at Nucleogenics for shipping out our, our products. Um, we received a good amount of product this week. I'm really excited to get it in the hands of the people. Jody from Texas. All right, we got people jumping on all over the place. We'll give about one more minute here. Now we're going to get rolling. We're going to get, get educated tonight a little bit on a very, very important and relevant topic. I know you are all going to take it in and, and uh, use it to teach, teach each other, teach your families. And uh, I'm really excited to provide that information for you tonight. It's 8 o'clock. Let's take off. All right, I know this is not the same familiar face that you've seen before. I am not Dr. Eric Nafuti. I am Dr. Jeremy Hendricks, and I'm coming to you live from my clinic here in Minnesota. And I couldn't be happier to be with you guys. I hope you had an amazing day today. Um, we had a fantastic day in the clinic. Um, we did six, uh, swabbed six more patients today. We're getting them rolling with the uh, custom nutrition and their DNA reports. We're finding out more and more about their health and their genetic blueprints. Um, if you're new tonight, and this is your first time joining us on a Wealthy Wednesday, welcome, okay? Um, some of this may come off as foreign to you and, you know, you might feel like you're trying to sip from a fire hydrant. Okay. Cause there's lots of information to take in and that's okay. We're all at different levels here of where we, uh, what we know about, um, DNA and our epigenetic reports. Um, are we throwing some things out there tonight? Um, the Q and a at the end will be, um, will be very good. Uh, time for you to lay some of those questions out there. And if we can't get to them right away, we'll get to them later. Okay. Um, so again, my name is Jeremy Hendricks. I'm a chiropractor. I'm a doctor of chiropractic up here in Minnesota. And uh, I really have a conviction to you know, helping people live their healthiest lives, um, making sure they have good information. When you have good information, you can take good action. Okay. If we don't know what to do, chances are we do nothing. Okay. So um, I've kind of dedicated my uh, career to uh, teaching and providing good health and wellness to my community and my area population here. And uh, as you can see tonight, that's that's growing exponentially um, with all you fine folks here. So thank you again for joining us. I do need to throw this disclaimer out here tonight. Anything we talk about is not intended as medical advice. Okay. If you are having issues that you need to re uh, receive care for, make sure you reach out to your healthcare practitioner for additional support. Um, my number is always open. You can always call me if we need to chat. Okay. Um, why are we here tonight? You saw the topic is heart health. Okay. Um, there couldn't be a more relevant topic right now. And uh, I'm not a cardiologist, okay? Which is why we're not here to talk about heart disease. We're not here to talk about what to do if you're having heart disease, okay? Um, we're here to talk about heart health, how to prevent having to go and take a trip to the cardiologist. Um, but we all know uh, someone in our family, someone in our community, someone in our close circle that has dealt with some sort of heart related illness, okay? Um, unfortunately, in uh, 2020, approximately 19 million deaths were attributed to cardiovascular disease. That's a huge number. That's a global number, but it's still a huge number, okay? I can't even fathom the amount of death uh, from heart disease alone, all right? Now, just in America, uh, over six and a half million Americans um, over the age of 20 have been diagnosed with heart failure. Okay, not just heart disease, not just a small problem, heart failure, right? We all remember from school what that failure word meant, right? <laughs> we, we're done, okay? So heart failure uh, is very prevalent in our country. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of those reasons tonight, but mostly what we're gonna focus on, you guys, is uh, what we can do about it, okay? What are the actions that we can take uh, with the information that we have uh, to make good decisions and keep really sound 
uh, healthy hearts, okay? Um, so backing up a little bit, okay, for some of you new people, all right? Um, what we can do now with our genetic testing, with our DNA swab, we can receive an epigenetic report that gives us um, our 18 actionable genes, all right? And what's an actionable gene? Let's back up a second there too. An actionable gene is something that your lifestyle has the capacity to turn on or turn off. Okay, so there are things that we can kind of manage um, to an extent with our lifestyle and with our decisions. Um, I can't say that we can add, take action on how tall you are or what color your eyes are. Okay, those are concrete rock solid genetics. And uh, the day we can change that, things are going to get real scary around here. But um, we're going to talk about those actionable genes. And specifically tonight, we're going to focus on those actionable genes that have to do with heart health, okay? Now, there's a grouping of those genes that are very specific to um, heart-related uh, health, health uh, processes in our body, okay? Um, so if you're writing some of this down tonight, and you can follow along with some of the information you have, the genes that we're going to be focusing on are our APOB, our CYP11B2, all right? That's our, our blood pressure gene, our MTH, FR and our MTRR genes, our NQ01 and our PON1, okay? Uh, that cluster of genes is what we're gonna kind of be focusing on tonight. Now we might bounce some reference to some of the others, the other 18 actionable items there, but specifically tonight we're talking about that heart health. Um, again, thanks for joining me. If you're just jumping on now, uh, Dr. Jeremy Hendricks, we're coming live from Hendricks Chiropractic in Minnesota tonight, okay? And we're gonna dive right into this information. Uh, when we get to the end, we will have some time for some, some Q&A, and we'll look through and answer some questions to the best of our ability. All right? Thanks again for joining us. All right, let's start with that APOB uh, gene. Now, this is going to be uh, our cholesterol gene. This, is, this influences our cholesterol, right? What do we know about heart disease and cholesterol, right? Um, we know that cholesterol can cause a buildup in our blood vessels, all right? And when cholesterol builds up in our blood vessels, we get narrowing, we get decreased blood flow, okay? Um, now we're gonna bounce back and forth through some anatomy and some physiology, all right? Um, but we're gonna start just by identifying some of these genes, what they are and what they mean if, or if they are uh, presenting as a, as a yellow or a red on your genetic report, okay? Um, so in the office, I can tell you clinically, this is, this is huge, okay? Um, cholesterol is showing up on nearly um, every, every uh, intake document that we take from, from our patients. When we sit down first to talk about, um, you know, what they're in for, first of all, but then what kind of family history do we have? It's going to come up there. Um, what type of medications are we on? And that's where we really see uh, a large part of the population that is uh, treating for high cholesterol issues. Now it comes to cholesterol, all right? We've got the, the two main types and we know uh, low density, which is the LDL. That's kind of the big bad one there. And HDL, which is high density. And that's actually something that we want to see elevated in our, in our reports, okay? Um, so when you have this gene expressing, you are having a hard time keeping your cholesterol in a normal range, keeping that LDL in a normal range, okay? Um, and if we can manage that, we can kind of greatly reduce our risk for that first step of, of cardiovascular disease, which is that the placking of our arteries, that buildup, okay? Um, so what are some things that we can do about that? We can take our nutrition, all right? Our nutrition is going to have what our body needs to fight that, that increased cholesterol, that inability to manage cholesterol levels in a normal range, okay? Now, um, kind of the twin brother to this, as far as cholesterol goes, is going to be our PON1 gene, okay? That's our lipid oxidation support. So that's what helps your body manage the ratio of LDL to HDL, okay? So just by getting our genetic reports in our hands and looking at these things, um, and I want you guys to do that as we're going through this. If you're seeing, if you're seeln some yellow or red um, in that PO1, PON1 gene, uh, you're going to have some triglyceride issues, all right? Um, so the cholesterol is kind of what leads to the narrowing on the inside of our blood vessels, okay? Um, decreasing the blood flow that way. 
triglycerides lead to what's more called arteriosclerosis, okay? There's atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of the cholesterol on the inside. There's arteriosclerosis, which is kind of the stiffening or the hardening of the artery walls, okay? Um, and that's gonna cause uh, some decreased blood flow as well, okay? Uh, so those are kind of our two cholesterol genes is our APOB and our PON1, okay? So definitely uh, taking a heads up and taking some action in your lifestyle if you've got yellows and reds in those, in those areas, okay? Um, and definitely looking at using your nutrition to support that, okay? All right, um, moving on to our CYP11, B2. All right, that's a mouthful, I know it is. Um, but when you see this stuff, you're gonna start recognizing that, okay, that's my blood pressure gene, all right? That's my, that's my adrenal gene. It regulates um, salt, fluid, and electrolyte balance. Okay, so uh, why is this important to our, our heart or our cardiovascular um, health? If our blood pressure is in a state uh, where it's above the normal range, okay, that is gonna be damaging again to our blood vessels. Um, it's gonna be damaging to all of our blood vessels, but specifically it can be damaged um, coronary arter artery vessels too, the ones that actually feed our heart. Remember our heart is made of cells just like the rest of our body is made of cells, okay? Um, and those cells also need uh, specific things, just like, just like the brain cells need specific things, the nerve cells, the muscle cells, okay? Um, every cell in your body needs good nutrition, good oxygen, all right? It needs to have good blood flow to receive that. And if we have damaged blood vessels, if those transportating uh, vessels that, that carry the nutrients and carry the blood and carry the oxygen to that are damaged, we're gonna have reduced flow. We're also gonna have some inflammation, okay? Um, now, we can go back to uh, talking about cholesterol. Cholesterol's always gotten kind of the bad, the bad rap as far as forming these plaques, right, that de decrease our blood flow. But there's more to it than just, um, just the cholesterol level, okay? Um, a lot of cardiologists that uh, have spoken on this topic would agree that inflammation is just as responsible for the buildup of those plaques, okay? Um, now, if you have the combination of, of an inflammatory process in your blood vessel and followed by increased levels of cholesterol that are gonna form that plaque, um, that's kind of the killer combination, uh, which, which is gonna form that plaque, it's gonna build up, it's gonna narrow that blood vessel. If that's a blood vessel that's fueling your heart tissue, um, you're gonna definitely have uh, some sort of symptom myocardial uh, infarction being the, the worst, which is, which is a heart attack, okay? When your heart tissue stops being fed with, with the proper nutrients, okay? Now, we don't wanna talk about disease states tonight. Again, we're here to talk about health. We're here to talk about heart health, not heart disease. Um, so we're gonna to try to avoid some of those conversations about uh, you know, symptoms and, and um, you know, uh, episodes that people have gone through, okay? So back to our list, um, we've talked about the APOB gene. Um, how it influences our cholesterol, okay? We talked about the CYP11, B2, which, which regulates blood pressure, okay? Now, if you're having uh, issues with regulating blood pressure, you're also having issues with fluid, okay? And we've pounded on this topic over and over and over in the clinic. And the number one way to fight against um, this gene expression is to really, really hydrate your body, okay? And now I know Dr. Eric's touched on this before too, but there's more to hydrating than just the liquid, just the water, all right? We gotta look at the mineral content, uh, the electrolyte balance, okay? Um, when we are dehydrated, our blood runs thicker, okay? Um, it's a chemistry thing, all right? So we need to really hydrate our body, half your body weight in ounces uh, of water, and you need to uh, really support your body with nutrition, okay? And that's, it's such a match made in heaven, having these reports and then having these ingredients that can act on our gene expressions, okay? Um, so in your nutrition, if you've, got, if you've got issues with this gene, you know, they're gonna put the Hawthorne berry in there, which I've been using in practice for years on its own. And this is built into the nutrition formula. Um, magnesium and potassium, those very, very important uh, electrolytes and minerals. Okay, vitamin C is gonna be a big one. And then garlic powder, okay? I know a lot of patients of mine that, uh, that supplement garlic, okay? 
Uh, and again, this is this is in our nutrition, our customized formula based off our genetic blueprint, okay, to help regulate blood pressure, help regulate our adrenals, okay. Um, so people that have this this blood pressure gene uh, expressing are going to have major major uh, adrenal fatigue. All right. So definitely, if this is on your report, um, make sure you're following through with your nutrition. But also, you got to you got to do that lifestyle thing. You got to hydrate. Okay. You got to have that that fluid level balanced out. If you haven't done your reports yet, if you have not done a swab and you're fairly new here and you're feeling some of those symptoms that you know, um, if you've had high blood pressure in the past or you know a family member that struggles with blood pressure, you know this is this is one way to to kind of maybe explain why why that's happening. And again, if we don't regulate that blood pressure, our heart health is definitely going to go down because of the damage to our, our blood vessels. All right. Um, now, this one comes up all the time. It comes up with everything because it's the master switch of all of our actionable genes, and that's the MTHFR. Um, what does MTHFR have to do with the heart? Okay, how, do we, how can we break this down and, and really understand this simply? Um, when we have this gene variant, which 85% of the population carries a variant um, of this MTHFR gene, um, we have the uh, lack the ability to break folic acid down into what's called active folate. All right. Now, I know you've heard this in other talks if you've been with us before. If you're uh, joining us for the first time, I know this is going to be like sipping from the fire hydrant. Okay. So just try to try to visualize um, what we're talking about here. Um, in the uh, 80s, 90s, when they started adding folic acid into everything that's enriched and fortified um, in our food supply, they did that because uh, active folate is very important in reducing birth defects, okay? Um, now, now that we know 85% of the population carries a variant, which does not allow us to turn the man-made form folic acid into the form our body can use active folate. Um, now that we know that, we're starting to see um, improvement in a lot of processes with heart health. Okay, here's how it works. Um, folic acid needs to break down to active folate. Active folate, if deficient, because we can't convert this, leads to a buildup of what's called homocysteine in our blood. Uh, what's homocysteine? That's another amino acid, okay? And we do need it, but when it gets elevated, um, homocysteine can cause all sorts of premature coronary artery disease, okay? Coronary arteries are the ones that feed the heart tissue, all right? They're the ones that wrap around the heart and feed the, the cells of the heart with blood flow, oxygen, and nutrients, okay? Um, and so when we have elevated homocysteine levels, we get premature coronary artery disease leading to myocardial events, all right? Um, so when, when we are reducing our level of folate, we cannot convert homocysteine back to what's called methionine, okay? Um, it's that breakdown of homocysteine back to methionine that's not happening, okay? Um, and that's, that's the MTHFR involvement in, in heart health, okay? That's the why. Now we know um, MTHFR is way more than that, but for tonight, we're gonna leave it as, you know, this is the conversion of folic acid to folate that's not happening, which leads to elevated levels of homocysteine, okay? I know that's a lot to take in. Um, you guys can review that over and over and just kind of um, research, you know, that homocysteine pathway and how it affects your, your heart health. And maybe you'll have a better understanding if you can get that visual in there. Um, the other gene that's involved with homocysteine, and we know is MTRR, okay? Um, and MTRR, you should really follow your MTHFR lifestyle 95% of the time. And this is, this is one of those areas where for me, on a, on a clinical level, it has been so important to have this genetic report. Um, because otherwise we're just kind of, we're just kind of guessing based off family history and symptoms, all right? And remember, we can't treat symptoms. We've got to treat root causes. And so if we know there's a root cause of this gene variant 
um, we know we got to make some major lifestyle changes when it comes to MTHFR and MTRR. Okay. Uh, we need to probably have a conversation with our doctor if we know that we're yellow or red in these areas, uh, because we need to be doing regular uh, blood level checks of homocysteine and uh, our complete blood counts, our B12 and folate. Um, we want to know where those levels are at fairly frequently if we do have these levels expressing, these genes expressing in our, in our report. Okay. Now, uh, moving on to the rest of our genetic report. Um, this is a huge one, okay? The NQ01 gene, right, or the CoQ10, right? This is your heart's energy, all right? Uh, CoQ10 is a, it's a fat soluble, it's kind of like a vitamin, but it, what it does is it turns food into energy, all right? It also has a very powerful antioxidant uh, capabilities that, that protect us, uh, from, you know, the damages of free radicals, okay, free radicals. Remember, every cell in your body is like a little factory, all right? Um, you got stuff coming in, and then you've got stuff coming out. As the factory is, is doing its thing, what's coming out, that byproduct, that waste, those are free radicals. And we have to have antioxidants that come by and vacuum those things up and, and take them out of our bodies. If we have a buildup of free radicals in an area, we're going to definitely have um, cellular damage, okay? If we have uh, cellular damage over a wide area, we've got damaged tissue, all right? If we've got a lot of damaged tissue, we probably have a damaged organ. And if we have damaged organs, we definitely have a damaged organism, all right? You've heard this talk, um, how cellular health has that cascade effect, all right? When we start seeing cellular damage. So again, it's a very powerful antioxidant that will help uh, protect against the damage of those free radicals. Um, and on a lifestyle note, okay, if you've got this gene expressing, even if you don't, right? Even if you're a green on NQ01, you still need it. You still need CoQ10. Um, what's gonna vary if you're a green, a yellow, or a red with this gene, this NQ01, is the form of CoQ10 that your body needs. All right. Um, and I think it was Trish that did a, a fantastic job of breaking that down in her presentation on um, if you're green, you need uh, ubiquinone. If you're a yellow, you need ubiquinone and ubiqu ubiquinol. And if you're a red, you need ubiquinol. OK, the beauty of this, folks, is we don't have to we don't have to really figure all that out because our nutrition has already figured that out for us. And that's where this is such a game changer for me on a clinical level. And for you folks on a consumer level too, um, you know, that aren't working clinically, but are, are just watching out for your best uh, outcomes, you know, and your health as you age, they're figuring it out for you. And kudos to you for still, you know, kind of wanting to know more and try to understand this more. That, that's outstanding. And, you know, my patients too, I hope, I hope some of you guys are joining us tonight. <laughs> Hopefully you could find a way to get the link to work. I know, um, it's, it's a lot to take in, um, but people were excited, you know, that, that, you know, that I was their doctor and that I was going to be having this opportunity to, to talk to so many people tonight. Um, I think that brought them a little pride and I, I try to encourage all, all the folks that I treat to, you know, engage in these things too. And, and slowly, but surely we are. Um, but back to that topic is we don't, we don't have to do all the, all the guesswork anymore. We're testing and we're getting fantastic information. We're getting um, if you go to the back of your report, not the last page that shows you your formula, but if you go to the, the few pages right in front of that and look at all those studies that are used to determine what the best ingredients are in your nutrition to treat uh, based on your genetic expression. I mean, that's a ton of work and a ton of work has been done and put into that. And I tip my hat to the, the scientists and the people that are, that are working through all that stuff. Um, it's, it's an incredible, incredible opportunity for us to, to really uh, supplement our genetic blueprint, all right? I've been waiting my whole career for something like this to come along, and here we are, okay? It's, uh, it's 2023, and we got, you know, we got the keys to the, to the Cadillac. You know, we, we, can really, we can really do a lot um, with this information. Um, so back to CoQ10. Okay, again, CoQ10 is like your heart's energy, all right? We need to turn food into energy for our heart. So if you have, if you've got low CoQ10, um, which 
you know, CoQ10 drops as we age. So you, you're going to need it. Again, even if you're a green on your report, this is going to be in your formula. So you need it. Um, and, you know, you have to, um, you got to gotta take that one and say, you know what, uh, heart energy, that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Because our heart needs energy to work. Our heart never stops. You know, you go to sleep at night, your heart's still working. All right. Your heart's working 24, 7, 365 since the day you were born, since the day you were uh, in the womb. Okay. That heart's been working. All right. So it needs good energy. CoQ10, major, major component of heart energy. All right. Now, uh, let's look at some things as far as um, what else CoQ10 can do. Um, Cleveland Heart Lab says it may have significant cardiovascular protective effects. Um, here's, here's a bit of information. And this is the one I see clinically all the time when people come in and on their intake document, they show me the, the statin drugs that they're taking to lower their cholesterol, right? Um, and cholesterol lowering statins can also reduce the blood levels of CoQ10. All right. So this is something that we can test for um, in the blood, right, as well. So another conversation you should have with your doctor, especially if you're being put on um, a statin drug or if you've been taking a statin drug, okay, I'm not going to look at you any different. We're going to have a conversation about it clinically, and I'm going to show you what your options are. And I'm going to talk to you about all the, the effects, but you should definitely be getting your CoQ10 levels looked at. All right, especially if you're experiencing some, some symptoms, um, fatigue, or uh, you're drowsy, you're tired, um, your heart's feeling like it's low on energy, it's working way too hard. Okay, so we need to, we need to get those levels checked. Um, everyone should get those levels checked. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Now we touched a little bit on uh, the PON1 when we talked about the APOB. Okay, because again, APOB influences our cholesterol. Um, PON1 helps your body manage the ratio of cholesterol, all right? Uh, and again, if you're yellow or red, you're, you're likely having some triglyceride issues. Uh, buildup of cholesterol leads to atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of the plaques, the narrowing of the opening of the artery because of that plaque. High triglycerides leads to thickening and harder, hardening of the, of the uh, actual blood vessel walls there. Um, it causes narrowing as well. Okay, and it causes a lack of uh, flow. So if we're going to support heart health, all right, what we need to provide for our heart health is we need to have uh, de-inflammation of the heart. Okay, we need to restore and maintain vascular integrity. Okay, vascular integrity, vascular system is the, the vessel system, right? Um, we need to improve blood flow, okay? So we need to keep the flow going through those vessels, right? The structure of that vessel needs to be good, okay? It needs to be nice and pliable, not hard, not stiff, all right? The inside of that vessel needs to be clean, all right? Not full of cholesterol plaques, all right? Um, and, then, and then we need to also boost something which is called nitric oxide, okay? Uh, nitric oxide is pretty important for our hearts. All right, and you're going to know if you've got low levels um, because you're going to be depleted of oxygen. So where does nitric oxide come from? Nitric oxide is produced by the endothelium of your uh, vessels, right, and your heart, um, and it's produced best in the environment when we exercise, when we're active, okay, when we deep breathe, that kind of thing. But also, we need to regulate our cholesterol levels. Yeah, for that as well, because if it's being produced by the endothelium and that endothelium is being blocked by cholesterol or plaque, you know, and it's not able to secrete or produce that nitric oxide, um, we're going to have some, some low levels. Okay. What does nitric oxide do? It, 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 uh, it relaxes the inner muscles of your blood vessels. So when it relaxes those inner muscles of your blood vessels, you have better flow. Okay. Um, if you have low levels, you're going to have hardening. You're going to have stiffening. Okay. It's going to deplete your cells of oxygen. So, um, if you're one of those people that when you go and you are, you're exercising, you're running and you, you just have difficulty, you feel like you get tingly in your fingers and in your, in your extremities, or maybe you've got blotchy skin, um, really showing up there, you might not be getting enough oxygen delivery. 
So there's definitely a flow issue there for you. Um, nitric oxide could be one of those responsible uh, for not performing uh, real well in that in that exercise environment. Um, so again, this is something that you need to sit down with your provider and you need to have a discussion when you're when you're going to the, the chiropractor, your wellness doctor, your medical doctor, whoever it is you see that you go to uh, for support. If you guys aren't sitting down and talking about some of these things of uh, how you feel when you do certain things, um, you need to have those discussions or you need to find someone that will have those discussions with you. OK, because this all matters. OK, this is all part of the puzzle, because if we're doing damage to our cardiovascular system based on our, our lifestyle or because um, because we're depleted with something or we're over toxic with something, right? Um, cells get sick for two reasons and two reasons only. They're either toxic or they're depleted, right? In this case, you're either, you know, you're, you could be toxic with uh, high cholesterol. You could be toxic with, um, you know, a lack of, a lack of uh, water leading to, you know, buildup of uh, uh, harmful, harmful chemicals in your body. Again, water is the vehicle that our bodies use to, to get the nutrients to the cells and to get the antioxidant or to get the toxins out, right? Via the antioxidants. So if you're low on water, you're not getting detox well. You're also getting thickening of the blood, which is gonna to lead to higher blood pressure. Higher blood pressure is gonna damage those vessels. Uh, we're damaging the transport system of our body, okay? Um, I'm throwing a lot at you. Uh, give me a thumbs up if everything's being absorbed received well here okay um you need to know that that we're making some good sense here um now when we want to talk about uh the cardiovascular system thanks patricia awesome thanks audrey um i want to go back to i want to re-echo something that um you know dr eric hits on so many times and that is our hierarchy of health okay we can go back to this this concept of our hierarchy of health Okay, so um, I don't know if you have that visual in front of you. I should have printed one off, but um, if you're writing things down again, let's go through those levels, all right? Now, what's the hierarchy of health? I want you to think of your health like a ladder, right? You start at the ground, all right? The first step of the ladder has got to be your genetic blueprint, okay? What makes you unique is your DNA. Your DNA lives in every cell of your body, okay? And it is what tells that cell how to behave in your life, in your lifestyle, when it's, when it's receiving um, different stimuli, all right? So your cells behave based on your genetic blueprint, based on your DNA. So the first step of that ladder has got to be good, healthy DNA, all right? Not damaged, not, uh, not unclean, okay, not untreated, all right? So if we're living according to our, our genetic blueprint, we can go on step one. That second step, okay, and this is where us chiropractors really shine, all right, is in our central nervous system, our brain and our spinal cord, okay? Your brain can't talk to your heart. Your heart can't talk to your brain unless you've got a healthy nervous system. And those circuits have to be open. They have to be functioning in order for our, for our brain to talk to our heart, okay? For our heart to talk back to our brain. Um, you can't wiggle your pinky toe if you don't have a nerve connection to it, all right? All you folks with neuropathy out there, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a real thing. We are not wireless. We are not Bluetooth, like these earbuds I'm wearing. Okay, there's no cord from, from here to there, but uh, our bodies are different. We have to be wired, okay? So step two of the ladder of the hierarchy of health is our central nervous system, our brain and our spinal cord. If they're not healthy, um, you know, we don't have to worry about cardiovascular health because we're, we're probably not gonna be here real, real long, all right? Now, the next step on that hierarchy of health, okay, if you're writing these down, we've got our, our DNA, our genetic blueprint, we've got our central nervous system, and now we're climbing up. The next one is our autonomic nervous system, okay? Um, that's that whole uh, automatic part of us that we don't have to think about. We can't really control it. Um, it's uh, processes that happen in the background, all right? Um, our autonomic nervous system decides if we're in fight or flight or if we're in rest and heal. Okay, and if we're in fight or flight all the time, we're going to run our body down like somebody that just stole a car. All right, we're going to get in, we're going to drive it, we're going to go until it runs out of gas, and then we're going to then we're going to have to find something else. Okay, so our autonomic nervous system has to be healthy. All right, um, so genetics blueprint, um, 
central nervous system. We got our autonomic nervous system. Now we're moving on to our gut, our gut, our GI system. All right. And let's look over here to our gut health triad. Okay. Um, anybody that's out there that's having uh, symptoms of leaky gut, you know, chronic inflammation, fatigue, um, all the itises, all the itises. All right. Um, if we've been on a regimen of, of antibiotics our whole life, and I meet people every day that are on antibiotics currently. All right. And then I talk to them about what they need to do um, to repair their gut, because without their gut, we can't fix their shoulder problem. Without their gut, we can't fix their headaches. Without their gut, we can't fix what's above uh, the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system and the gut, okay? Um, next, we're moving to the endocrine system, our hormones, all right? Our, our, our communicators, our signalers of the body that tell uh, our tissues how to behave, okay? If, if um, one organ system wants to tell another organ system to do something, we send a hormone, right? We send a signal um, and we, we achieve a process in our bodies. If that's not happening, all right, our heart's not gonna function well. So we have to have a healthy gut. We have to have a healthy hormone endocrine system if we expect to have healthy cardiovascular uh, system as well, okay? Um, you know, and the autonomic nervous system uh, one of the things that that controls is the smooth muscle. Now, smooth muscle, smooth muscle is kind of unique in our in our bodies. You know, um, it's what it's what kind of controls like vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Okay, so when you're when you're in fight or flight and you're running from the monster in the uh, dark alley, right, and all the blood is rushing out to your to your extremities, okay, because you need to run for your life. Um, that's that's sympathetic. That's fight or flight. All right, and then we bring that blood flow back to our core when we relax and we calm down. We get home in our bed at night. We do our block breathing. Right, we can put our bodies back into a parasympathetic state, which is resting and healing and digesting. Okay, that's when our body repairs itself. It's a very important mechanism. Okay, if you haven't learned how to take your body from fight or flight and try to encourage it back to a, a parasympathetic state, that's a that's a whole other talk we should do. Um, for maybe a future, future Wealthy Wednesday is uh, just the difference between um, sympathetic and parasympathetic. I've got some great visuals on that stuff. Um, it's extremely important for healing, okay? So um, after our hormone system, we have got to talk about our immune system, all right? Our immune system is what fends off all the bad guys, okay? Just this week now, I've been, I've been hearing a lot about uh, some of the bad guys in school, right? Strep throat and the stomach bug and things like that. And what I tell my patients and, and all my parents out there, when you start hearing those things coming from school, you know, so-and-so was sick today or so-and-so was out today, um, you know, it's time to start getting that, that Pure 47, uh, you know, get that, that good uh, silver into the body um, so that we can start deflecting some of those bugs, all right? Remember, uh, silver works by, by uh, not allowing the pathogens to enter the cell. They just kind of bounce off, all right? Protects us on a on a very uh, microscopic level, okay? And then we are so thankful to have a liposomal uh, version of it, the best version that's out there. Uh, best version I've used in 15 years of practice, Pure 47, you can use it, you can use it universally, okay? You can use it for um, peds with ear infections, you can use it for eye stuff, you can use it for sinus stuff, um, and you can use it for just overall uh, immune support. Um, so, that's our next level on the hierarchy of health. So we, we got our genetic blueprint, our central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, our autonomic nervous system, our gut, so important, our gut, so important. All right, our hormone, our endocrine system, our immune system, and now, now we've got our cardiovascular system, okay? So tonight's, tonight's talk was about heart health, okay? But at the end of the day, you guys um, and gals, what we need to really focus on is starting from the ground up and building a healthy system. Again, we're not here tonight to talk about heart disease. We're not here to talk about conditions related to heart disease or deaths or uh, heart attacks or uh, congestive heart failure, uh, all the things that can go wrong. Um, that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to teach how can we equip ourselves with the best ingredients and the best knowledge. And I'm telling you, I've been, I've been seeing a lot of people over the years. I've, I've treated people for 15 years now. I went to school for eight years before that. This is great. I've learned more in the last two years than I've learned in the last 15, okay? And I, I'm not saying that just to hype people up. That's 100% that's truth. I feel like far better clinician with these tools in my hands 
because I can get your genetic blueprint. I can start at the base of the hierarchy of health and help you complete that step. And then I can give you adjustments and manipulation to your spine to improve your circuits, turn all your circuits on, make sure your tissue is working best, make sure your brain can communicate with your body. All right. That's, that's step two right there. Okay. Because nothing's going to work if it's not connected. If it's shut off, it's shut off. Right. If the lamp isn't plugged in, you can turn the switch all day long. That light's not turning on. All right. Um, and so, and then with the, with the fantastic gut products that we have here. Okay. If, if we can trace um, cardiovascular health back to uh, the gut, we've got a solution there. We've got the gut health triad. All right. We can heal and seal the leaks in our gut that are, that are causing inflammation down the line in our, in our cardiovascular tissue. Okay. If there's things that are getting into your bloodstream through your gut um, that are creating inflammation on your blood vessels, it's affecting your cardiovascular health. Okay. And that's why gut becomes, that's why gut comes before um, hormone and immune and, and cardiovascular on a hierarchy of health. Okay. Now on a daily basis, I mean, I get a ton of people that are in here complaining about their hips, complaining about their sciatic nerve or their sporadic nerve or their sciatic nerve. It, it gets called quite a few things. It's kind of funny. We, we laugh about it as a staff um, and we're, we're constantly educating people. But uh, what I tell those people when we sit down and we talk is if we really want to get to the base of this problem, we've got to back the train up a little bit. We got to look down the ladder. Um, you can't jump from the ground up to step eight. Okay. Uh, it's, it just doesn't work that way. Um, and so the question I often get is, okay, well, what do we do? And I say, well, we can start digging into your genetic blueprint. Um, we can look back at your gut health. Let's just go back a few steps and let's start asking some questions on what's really going on. Okay. Under the layers, what's really the root cause of this? And how can we, how can we, how can we affect that? And we've got an answer. We've got an answer here. We've got our gut health triad. Mom. When we heal and seal those leaks, the bad stuff stops getting into the bloodstream, going up the line and causing all sorts of problems. All right. So we, we block that from happening. Um, you're not getting into the bloodstream unless you go through a healthy gut cell because I've got healthy gut cells because I take my triad. All right. All right. Um, the, uh, the supplements that are in there are uh, the best, the best that I've found, it's the best that I've found for healing and sealing um, leaky gut. All right. So I think you guys are catching on to that hierarchy of health again. I just wanted to echo that again um, because Dr. Eric has painted such a, a good uh, image of that and why it's important and how we can think, you know, uh, instead of thinking about our symptoms, okay, we're going to think about the root cause. We're going to, we're going to be educated on that. So, um, I mean, wow, we've, we've really covered a lot here tonight. Okay. We've, we've covered um, the genes that are um, involved with our heart health. Okay. We've covered APOB, which is our cholesterol. Okay. Um, it influences our cholesterol. Okay. Um, low density, bad, high density, good, right. That ratio is, is managed by our PON1 gene. Okay. And the reason I'm going through this again, guys, if you're, if you're looking at your reports or if you're trying to help someone else else with a report and you're seeing yellows and reds on here, um, these are the things that we need to be really testing and, and checking out, looking under the hood, see what's going on. Okay. Um, we talked about MTHFR. We're always going to talk about MTHFR. MTHFR is like the big bad wolf. Okay. Um, and it's the master switch. So if we have that variant, if it's yellow, if it's red, if it's expressing which 85% of the population carries a variant with, with this, which is associated with, you know, higher blood homocysteine levels, that's going to affect your heart health. Okay. Um, so the cardiologist and you should probably have that conversation too. If you're trying to treat, you know, some heart stuff, um, you know, get their take on, you know, what do you know about MTHFR? Maybe I have that, or, you know, maybe we should look at my homo homocysteine levels. And, and see where they're at if you've never done that. Okay, that'd be a great thing to do. It'd be, it'd be an eye opener. Okay, they're probably gonna look at where did you hear that? You know, um, who have you been talking to? Um, how do you know what homocysteine is? All right. Um, if you're not having those conversations, start having those conversations. If you need to find a new doctor, find a new doctor that wants to have those conversations with you um, and try to find the least invasive, less, uh, least amount of side effect uh, possibilities that you can do to treat and have good cardiovascular health, okay? Good heart health. 
Now, I know some of you are anxious here because, you know, Robert's, Robert's talking big today. And, and I love it when that happens. Okay. Um, the, uh, there's some things that, that are coming down the chute. Okay. Um, now I can't give you names and I can't give you exact details, but with tonight's discussion being about heart health, I think you can connect the dots on what this next product is going to help us with. And this couldn't be more timely. You guys, you heard those statistics at the beginning. All right, 19 million deaths globally since 2020, or in 2020. Um, and we're not going to talk about 2020 real long because we all know about 2020. All right, 19 million global deaths related to cardiovascular disease. Um, and then the amount of, you know, adults, over 6 million adults in, in America, all right, just in our country. We lead the country, or we lead the world, by the way, in cardiovascular disease, you know. So um, number one, I guess. So uh, this couldn't be more timely is what I'm trying to get at. And as a clinician who cares and treats for people uh, to the best of my ability, what's coming down the pipe here is going to be huge, all right? It's gonna be all about repair, all right? Repair and restore, just like we can repair and restore our gut with the gut health triad, we're gonna have some things that we can throw at the old cardiovascular system to try to improve and restore and repair, okay? On top of just preventing, okay? Remember, you can't out supplement an unhealthy lifestyle, all right? So when it comes to cardiovascular health, we know, we know what's good for us, we know what's bad for us, all right? We know that eating French fries for a daily, a daily diet is probably going to lead you to some cardiovascular illness and stress. All right. And depending on where you're at with your genetic blueprint, it could be, it could be the life or death situation for you. Okay. Um, but what we are about to embark on is a game changer. It's an absolute game changer for me as a clinician, because now I can take that person who's got X, Y, and Z on their, on their intake form. And not only can I help them look at their genetic blueprint and see if they're a yellow or red in the APOB and the CYP11B2 and the MTHFR and the MTRR. But when we start to find those things on their epigenetic report, and we put that in combination with making some lifestyle changes, we're going to have a tool that's going to help them restore and repair what's happened and what's, what's been taking place in their cardiovascular system. And that is so exciting, you guys, that it's, it's, it's time for that, all right? Um, I can't give you exact names. I can't give you exact times of what this is gonna be called, what it looks like. What I can tell you is, is there's some fantastic ingredients that are gonna be involved here, okay? Um, and we're gonna to get to some Q&A here in just a second, and then we'll try to um, answer some questions. And again, please don't ask me names. Please don't ask me, uh, timing. That's not my territory. Um, don't shoot the messenger either. Okay. Uh, I'm just as excited as all of you are to be able to get my hands on this and introduce it to my patient population. And, and especially those people that, you know, are kind of holding their head down because they've got these, you know, you're, you're dealt this, you're dealt this genetic blueprint. All right. Now that doesn't mean you're SOL. All right. Um, your genetics load the gun. Yeah. Okay. But it's that lifestyle. All right. It's that lifestyle that really pulls the trigger. All right. You've heard that so many times and, and it's, it couldn't be more true. Okay. And so part of our lifestyle is our supplementation. All right. Um, nutrition is the best supplement I've ever seen in my life because it's the only supplement I've been on in my life that is made for me based off my genetic blueprint. Okay. Um, and some of this that's coming down the line is going to be just as incredible as, as the rest of the products that we have introduced for you guys. It's gonna be very specific to your cardiovascular system, okay? Um, and some of these things are things, like I said, I've been incorporating in practice individually, uh, but it's gonna be that combination of products that's going to really blow you away, okay? Um, and we kind of talked earlier in our, in our talk about um, a, certain, a certain very important part of our cardiovascular health that's produced by the epithelium of our, of our cardiovascular tissue um, called nitric oxide. And there's gonna be some things in here that are gonna really promote, really promote um, good nitric oxide 
formation. They're going to really promote um, management of our blood vessels as far as inflammation and stiffening or hardening. Okay. Um, there's going to be some things that really promote uh, cholesterol management. And even if you've got some cholesterol issues, it's going to help you drive those down as naturally as possible. Okay. Um, and then there's going to be some great coaching like there always is. Okay. We're never just going to take a product and shove it your way and be like, go take the product. But we're going to give you, we're going to give you all the details. We're going to really make sure you understand it so that you can explain it well, so that you can teach people about it. Right. The old motto. I love it. Every time he says it, each one, teach one. We got to have that conviction of telling people what we know, right? Knowledge is so important. Good knowledge is so important and knowledge without action, right? We can't do that, you know, and we definitely can't take action without knowledge. That's, that's just careless. We've heard those concepts over and over, but we're going to give you the best information. We're going to give you the best products possible, and then we're going to teach, them how, teach you how to use them, okay? All right. Um, so definitely look forward to that. Again, don't shoot the messenger. I wish I could tell you more. This is going to be fantastic. We're going to do it together. All right. Together we will. Together we will have better cardiovascular health. Together we will have better gut health. All right. Together we will use our genetic blueprints to create the, the most positive health outcomes for our loved ones, for our patients, for our families, for our communities. Okay. Um, you guys, I'm on this journey with you. Um, we've got a great great set of leaders. Um, so we're going to trust, trust that uh, the timing of this is just, it's divine. All right. The timing of this couldn't, it couldn't come at a better time. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to try to click on my Q and A and see if that pops up. Um, okay. And let's see what Gail's got for us. Got double MTHFR, double MTRR, yellow CYP11B2, but no family history of heart disease. Is that unusual? I don't think it's unusual. No, um, we'd have to look into your your family history's family history. Okay, um, we'd have to know um, what kind of lifestyle were they living. You know, um, were they doing really well that way? Um, you know, uh, double MTHFR, double MTRR, and yellow CYP11B2. Um, those genetics came from somewhere. All right. So um, definitely follow your lifestyle recommendations for those things. Okay. Um, definitely uh, get some of those blood tests um, done. Have a conversation with your, whoever your healthcare practitioner is. I would recommend a very um, holistic uh, functional medicine doctor um, <clears throat> who would be able to help you keep an eye on some of those things. All right. Um, so definitely search on that side of things. Um, is there any reason someone who's on HIV meds or antibiotics can't take nutrition at the same time? Uh, client was told she cannot take vitamins. Uh, that's a tough one. We should have a private conversation, Audrey, and I'd love to introduce myself to whoever it is that you were uh, referring to. And we should definitely have a private conversation about that. That's that's really complex. And definitely thank you for, for asking that. Okay. And that's going to take some some digging. Okay. Um, okay, Gail says disregard that one. Okay, um, we just got a few more, uh, a few more on there. Uh, that um, definitely, if you have some um, questions that maybe you don't want to throw out right now, and you're still trying to process this information, um, you can always reach out to me. You can always reach out to Dr. Eric. You can always reach out to um, the page. Okay, and we'll try to reach out back as as timely as possible. OK, um, get millions of questions in a week, I think. But we do the best we can to answer answer a lot of them um, back to, you know, just just talking about uh, my clinical experience here again with the tools that we have. Um, today, we swabbed six patients. OK, uh, Patty, how do we reach you? You can look uh, into Messenger. You can you can definitely send some some messages that way. OK. Uh, Hendrix Chiropractic page, um, you know, definitely reach out uh, and we'll do the best we can to, to give you good information. Um, like I said, we, we swabbed six people today. Um, a couple of those people didn't even really, you know, we, we, we had the conversation initially that led to the decision that, that they were ready to, you know, receive their, their uh, genetic blueprint so we can give them, you know, better information. And, um, you know, just, just the way their eyes light up. 
uh, when you tell them that there's some things we can do or there's some, you know, they haven't heard that before. I've just always been told that my fibromyalgia is just, it's, it's just part of me and I got to just deal with it. Um, and if your doctor's telling you that it's time to find a new doctor, okay, it's time to talk and have a conversation with someone else that says, you know what, we're going to, we're going to look under the hood. Okay. We're not just going to throw you in this bucket over here. that says we can't do anything for you. Um, and same thing goes with uh, irritable bowel. Uh, I, I have irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Well, what are you doing about that? Well, I just, you know, I do the, uh, you know, I do the uh, uh, medication to just basically eject everything out of my body. So I don't have to deal with it. Um, okay. That's not a good, that's not a good situation. We should look farther into that. Okay. Um, so definitely if you've got, if you've got loved ones, you've got family members you know, that are struggling with just some unforeseeable uh, issues that they don't, maybe they haven't tried something like this before. Definitely encourage them. Okay. Definitely uh, show them these videos. Um, help them get on board with educating themselves as well. You got to be an advocate and an ambassador for your own health, especially these days now. Okay. We're in a period of time right now where um, you got to be your own advocate. You got to, you got to really chase things down. And, you know, I love uh, the videos from, from Trish uh, explaining the, um, you know, how to read your report and how to understand it. All right. Um, you can't watch those enough. Watch them over and over and over again. Watch Dr. Eric's stuff on cellular health and gut health. Watch that stuff repeatedly. Uh, there's so much media out in the world right now, but you got you gotta, you gotta fill your ears and your eyeballs with, with good information. And I can tell you, 15 years of practice, this is the best information and the best tools that I have received. Okay. Um, and so kudos to the company, kudos to um, all of you guys for promoting health and promoting knowledge and, and wellness. Um, yeah, thank you, Gary, uh, from Knoxville, Tennessee. Thanks. Thanks for a great night. All right. I hope to be back here again. This is my first time flying solo. So um, hopefully we did well tonight. All right. We covered a lot of information. Definitely rewatch. Okay re-listen and uh thank you holly thanks thanks for the praise tonight you guys um i think we're going to wrap things up for tonight uh look forward to next wednesday um and definitely log in and share those links and get everybody here for another fantastic uh wealthy wednesday and i hope to see you guys again very soon um, god bless all of you have a great night uh stay well uh and i'll see you again uh, very soon thanks